Hi, and welcome to this next video on the trigonometry section. And this one, we're going to have a look at uh, these things called the addition formula. And we're really getting to the kind of the heavy hitters of the trigonometry world on the A level course with these ones. So, strap yourselves in, and here we go. What we're going to be doing is seeing where these things, these addition formulae, come from, and then looking at how they can be used in proofs and solving equations. So, here we go. <clears throat> You're not going to be asked to. Uh, ever reproduce this but it's always a good idea to know that there's a good sound mathematical reason for why these things why these equations and all these different uh, links between all the trig formally work so what I'm going to do is start off with those two points P and Q and they are both uh, a distance of one unit away from the origin and now I'm going to consider that angle there so the angle between um, the line to P and the x-axis is A and so that what that means is that P has got coordinates. If I just put some kind of those, see those red dotted lines in there. That distance there is cos A. That distance there is sine A. So P has got the coordinates cos A, sine A. If I do something similar with B, or what I'm going to call as the angle B, so hopefully we're happy that Q is going to have the coordinates cos B, sine B. Okay, so we've got those two points uh, on our grid at the moment. What I'm now going to do is come up with an expression for that distance there. Okay, and just bear with me, all this will it'll all come out in the wash at the end. So, here we go, PQ. We've got two ways of going at this one. First way is to go uh, at it using cosine rule. And to do that, I'm going to use this triangle here, OPB. So, for that, I'm going to need the angle there, which is clearly A minus B. Okay, so, uh, cosine rules, A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. Or in, I tri in our triangle, we've got PQ squared equals 1 squared plus 1 squared minus 2 times 1 times 1 cos, and the angle is A minus B. Okay, a little bit of tidying up, and there we go, PQ squared equals 2 minus 2 cos A minus B. What I'm going to do now is do exactly the same thing. I'm going to come up with an expression for PQ squared, but this time I'm going to do it using Pythagoras' theorem. You can see I've got my blue lines have appeared here, so that distance there is going to be the distance between the y coordinates. So that's sine A minus sine B. And this distance here is the distance between the X coordinates, which is cos A minus cos B. So we've got cos A minus cos B all squared plus sine A minus sine B all squared. Let's multiply out those brackets. Get that great big long thing there. But again, there's bits and pieces we can do to tidy this up. Because if you have a look, we've got a cos A squared, sorry, cos squared A there, sine squared A there, cos squared plus sine squared, that equals 1. So those two can go, and that's just one. See, the same thing is happening with angle B here. So, again, that's one as well. And then just leaves us these two expressions that we've got left. And again, a bit of tidying up. And there we go. What I'm going to do now is equate those two things, because both those expressions were equal to PQ squared. Um, so now what we've got is a bit of cancelling out those twos. And I've got some minuses at the front of each of those, and the whole thing has been multiplied by 2. So we can do a bit of tidying up, divide both by minus 2, and there you go. We've got cos A minus B equals cos A, cos B, plus sine A, sine B. So that is what, slightly bizarrely, we're calling it the addition formally, because, but we're dealing with sine A minus B, so that's like a difference formally, but you know, the, the, and we're going to come up with six of these in the end. Um, and they are referred to as the addition formally. I said we're going to get six of them. These things are on your formula sheets, so you have to be familiar with them. You will get to know them, uh, but if you're ever unsure, you can look them up in your formula book. Right, so there's our first one. I'm not going to go through that process with uh, with all of them. What I'm going to do is just show you how we get to um, kind of the other version for cos, which is cos A plus B. And if we do that by taking our angle B here, and sticking a minus B in its place. So you can see there, there's my A minus minus B is going to be um, A plus B. Now, what we've got in here is um, cos of minus B. We can see that happening there. And we've got sine of minus B, so that's there. And what we need to do is just have a little think about what's going on with those. So I'm just going to do a bit of sketching up here. So if I take my uh, triangle over here and I say, okay, let's call that angle there B. If I do another triangle that's exactly the same, but this time I define it in terms of an angle that's same size but negative, so that one there, that would be minus B. 
And what we can see from that is we've got two identical triangles. That distance there, which is the opposite side there, is the same as the distance in the opposite side there. So what we actually end up with is the sine of minus b is going to be the same as the value of sine b. But whereas this side here is positive, this one here is negative. So if we work out the sine of that one, that would actually be a negative value. So the sine of minus b is the negative version of the sine of b. If I do something similar for cos, let's draw that triangle again. And this time we've got b there, same thing. OK, I'll just do it all in the same colour here. There's minus b. Now with our cos, we're talking about adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So my adjacent side, let's pick a different colour again, is that one there. And you'll notice it doesn't matter. So let's put that's minus b. It doesn't matter whether or not um, it's a positive angle or a negative angle. What we've got here is the cos of minus b. Because these two triangles are both using this positive adjacent side, they're going to be the same. So that's the cos of b. And if you think about that in terms of your cos curve, there's your cos curve doing that. So if I've got an angle here, b, that gives me that cos there, if I continue my cos curve, you can see we end up with exactly the same thing over there. Right, so um, what we've got there is just those relationships between uh, negative angles and positive angles for sine and cos. So we are saying that that thing there, cos minus b, is the same as cos b. Sine of minus b is the same as minus the sine of b. So what's going to happen here is this thing here is just going to become cos b, and this thing here is just going to flip that sign in there. So we end up with that. And what you've got there is now a form for cos a plus b. Now, with these two forms, just notice, again, things are a little bit weird in that you've got this cos a plus b, but the sign in here is a minus, whereas for cos a minus b, the sign in there is a plus. Okay, so they're kind of back to front again. But let's say you've got those in your formula booklet if you if you need to refer to it. So those are our first two formulas. I said we've got six. You can probably guess uh, what the other four are going to be. Uh, but before we get there, let's just have a little uh, look at how we can play around with these things. <coughs> oh, sorry, excuse me. So we've seen, uh, I think it was a previous video where I did exact values for 30, 45, 60 multiples thereof. We can, those are the obvious ones, but we can do something similar for, uh, for example, cos 15, the multiples of 15. Because if we take cos 15 and write that as cos 45 minus 30, then you can see, <coughs> excuse me again. Um, we're going to be getting, uh, we can use our cos a minus b, and so all we're going to do is put these values, using 45 and 30, we're going to put these values into that formula there. So let's plonk the 45 and 30 into our formula from the top there, and we're going to get cos 15 is cos 45 cos 30 plus sine 45 sine 30, and because all of those these things are 45 and 30s, that means we can write them um, as... Uh, exact values using square roots cos 45 root 2 over 2 sine 45 is root 2 over 2 cos 30 root 3 over 2 sine 30 is a half there it all is so what we've got here is root 6 over 4 plus root 2 over 4 so the whole thing becomes root 6 plus root 2 all divided by 4 Okay, so there it is, an exact value. And again, if you wanted to type cos15 into your calculator and see if that uh, works out, you will see your calculator hopefully should check out that, uh, that expression there. Let's do something similar with cos15. And this, sorry, cos15, try again, cos105. And this time I'm going to use uh, an addition and I'm going to go for 60 plus 45. Same principle, chuck in the values. Cos60 is a half, sine 60 is root 3 over 2. So we get that. And then it ends up as root 2 minus root 6 all over 4. And there you go, exact values for cos 15 and cos 105. Okay, so that's a little bit of playing around with that. Let's crack on and have a look at how it might get used if we solve an equation. So here we go, we've got cos x plus pi over 3 uh, equals 3 sine x. And we know we're in radians because we've got an angle here in terms of pi over 3. 
and we've got our range here. Now, the first thing I'm going to say is don't ever, ever, ever think that you can just expand the brackets and write this as cos x plus cos pi over 3. It absolutely isn't. Don't ever do it. Your teacher should hammer you senseless if you ever do anything like that. Because we've seen from the previous slide what the value of uh, cos a, a plus b actually is. It's certainly not that. So we're not going to just treat this like a set of brackets and multiply it out like you would normal brackets. Okay. I'll get off my soapbox. Because that one looks a real on that one. And we'll crack on. So we know that cos x plus pi over 3 can be written like that using our addition formula. Again, notice cos a plus b is the one with the minus in it. And so now cos pi over 3, sine pi over 3, those have got exact values. There they are. Cos pi over 3 is half, sine pi over 3, root 3 over 2. We've got the whole thing now in terms of cos and sine. And the whole point of this was, in this equation at the top here, we've got two different angles. We've got this angle here, which is pi over 3 radians bigger than this angle over here. So if we're going to start doing any solving, we've got to have them in terms of the same size angle. And that's what we've now achieved by having this. So now we've got cos and sine. I think we're heading towards a sine over cos equals tan type of deal. So let's get all our signs together on one side. There we go. Uh, do some factorizing. And then we've got to bring the cos over to here. So we get sine over cos. Take that expression, move it over to there. And there we go. So in from the calculator, you're half plus 3 plus root 3 over 2 becomes that. You don't have to demonstrate how you rationalize that by hand. You can just put it into your calculator. And so what we've got there clearly is tan x is 6 minus root 3 over 33. And we want values of x between 0 and 2 pi. So tan to the minus 1 of that gives us 0.13 in terms of radians uh, for x. And also just kind of for the tan 1, we just keep adding on 180s, or in this case, adding on uh, pi. And so we've got 3.27. And there's our two values equation solved. Right, cracking on. We've spent a bit of time looking at cos a plus b, uh, cos a minus b, and how we can uh, use those to solve problems. Let's come up, let's say, with the other four now, which is sine a plus b, sine a minus b, tan a plus b, tan a minus b. Now, two more facts. Um, hopefully, we're, we're reasonably happy with these ones. The sine of x is the same as cos 90 minus x and vice versa. Again, if you think about it, sine 50 is the same as cos 40, cos 10 the same as sine 80, and so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do this time is say, well, OK, well, if we've got sine x equals cos 90 minus x, and now let's just call that angle x, let's let that equal a plus b. What that gives us is sine a plus b, putting the x in there, put the a plus b into here, and now let's just do a bit of playing around with the bracket and the minuses in there. And so we end up with cos 90 minus a minus b. What that does is gives us this thing now, this expression here, is in the form that we need um, to be able to use uh, cos a minus b. And we've got two angles. There's our first angle, 90 minus a. And there's our second angle, b. So... Off we go. Let's put that into the formula we know, which is cos A minus B, which is cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. But again, with the two angles that we've got from our expression up here. And we know that cos 90 minus A is going to be sine A. We know sine 90 minus A is going to be cos A. So if we just have a little look at what's going on up here. There we go. And so that gives us that one, sine A plus B equals sine A cos B plus cos A sine B. Now, for this one, hopefully we've spotted the fact that that's a plus there, that's a plus there. That seems to make a little bit more intuitive sense. That's kind of uh, a bit more the way around you, your brain would want it to be. Pulling exactly the same tricks we did with cos by replacing the B with a minus B gives us the other version, which is sine A minus B equals sine A cos B minus cos A sine B. Okay, so again, there in your formula booklet, that's four out of six done. Tan, here we go. Now, tan is a bit more uh, tricky. Now, I have seen this appear on exam papers as kind of you've got to uh, derive it yourself. So, it's well worth knowing how to do this one. 
First thing I'm going to do is use the sign and the cos versions to replace the top numeration denominator there. So that's our addition formally for sine A plus B and cos A plus B. Now this is the trick to it. What we're going to do now is divide the top and bottom by cos A, cos B. Now, stand by your beds. That's like a bit of a shocker. Um, looks absolutely horrible. So what I'm going to do is deal with each bit in part. I've got four sections to it. This bit here, another bit there. There's two parts of my numerator. And here's my denominator. I know it looks horrible. Trust me, it is going to work out a little bit nicer. So, that bit there. Sine A, cos B over cos A, cos B. The cos Bs will cancel, leaving us with that bit there. And that's clearly just going to be tan A. Something similar is happening here. The cos's are going to cancel. Again, we've got sine over cos, but this time that's going to give us tan B. Down the corner here, those two things top and bottom are the same. So that's just going to have a value of 1 because everything's going to cancel out to leave 1. And down here, we've got sine A, sine B, cos A, cos B. That bit there, I'm sorry, I need to highlight it. That bit there is tan A. That bit there is tan B. And there you go. There's your formula for tan A plus B. And the final bit, uh, if we do exactly the same process and we do exactly the same thing here, but using sine A minus B, cos A minus B, again, pull the trick about divided by cos A, cos B, and you end up with that one there. And again, you'll notice here we've got a plus here and a minus there, and essentially all it's really done is reverse the signs within those fractions. These two, again, are in the formula booklets. They tend not to be used quite so much as your sine and cos ones, but let's say I have seen... Um, this as a question on the exam paper so it's well worth remembering how to do it okay moving on apologies for the length of this video but there's, this is this is a biggie there's a lot to get through here we go find the value of tan x given that sine x plus 30 equals 2 cos x minus 30 again the issue is we've got two different size angles this one is um, an angle that's 30 degrees bigger than x this one here is an angle that's 30 degrees smaller than x We've got to get it uh, an expression for uh, the value of tan x. So what we've got to do is almost explode these bits out and fiddle around until we get where we're going. So what we're going to do is replace this left-hand side with sine A cos B, B plus cos A sine B. And then on this right-hand side here, this thing here is going to become cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. Obviously using our values of x and 30. So enough chatter, let's crack on with it. There it is on the left. There it is on the right. Again, you'll notice we're using 30s. So we know cos 30 is root 3 over 2. Sine 30 is a half. There they are. So let's put those values in there. Same on the right-hand side. And a bit of cancelling has happened with the 2 here. Now, again, we're, going to end, we're looking towards uh, tan. So we need, I think, all our cos is on one side and all our sines are on the other side. So let's do that. The minus sign over there. The cos x has come back over here. Factorise on the left-hand side by taking out sine x. Do something similar on the right-hand side. And so now we've got sine x over cos x. And cos x comes over here. Let's take this thing here, move it over. And we're there. And now it's a case of there's our tan x. Whack it into the calculator. And you end up with tan x is minus 8 plus 5 root 3. And there's our value for tan x. Notice we're not being asked to find the value of the angle. We're being asked to find the value of tan x. That's why that blue box has appeared, because our work there is now done. OK, next one. We've got uh, some information we're told. Given tan x minus y is 2 thirds, express tan x in terms of tan y. And then there's an extra bit on the end here. We'll come to that second. Let's just do the first bit. Tan x minus y is that. So we get that expression. So there's our expression for tan x minus y. We've got to get it saying tan x equals. So let's bring the 3 over there, take that over to the other side, do a bit of multiplying out. Hopefully you're happy you can see what I've done there. Now let's go all the tan x's together on one side, all the tan, tan y's on the other side. So I've brought that over there, I've taken the th minus 3 tan y over there. Clearly I've got tan x in here, tan x in here, do some factorising move the bracket over and there we go there's our expression for tan x in terms of tan y now let's have a look at the second part of the question given that sine y equals 5 over 13 find the values of x and we're told that sine y is between pi 
sorry, 0 and pi over 2. So if sine y is 5 over 13, I always like to pull the little triangle trick. You can do it using your, uh, your trig identities, sine squared plus cos squared equals 1 and um, the associated reciprocal ones. I think in this case it's easier just to draw out the triangle, put on the opposite and the hypotenuse, which means the adjacent side. Again, it's the, um, 5, 12, 13 Pythagorean triple. And if th those values are for angle Y, that tells us straight away that the tan of Y is going to be opposite over adjacent. So that gives us tan Y is 5 over 12. And now all we've got to do is put that value there into our expression that we had from the earlier part. There we go. Bang it into the calculator and it turns out nice and simple. Tan x is 3 over 2. Now, in this case we are being asked to work out the actual angles. We're trying to find the values of x. So we need tan to the minus 1 of 3 over 2. So we've got 0 0.983 and 4.12 and those are our two values between 0 and 2 pi. And there we go. I think that will probably do it for now.